Hey, it's Metacosis Perfectionellus, where medicine makes perfect sense. In the previous video, we have talked about purine metabolism, and today we'll talk about how to manage gout. In my previous video on gout diagnosis, I've asked you two questions, six and seven. The previous five questions are in this rheumatology playlist. Is it possible to encounter an acute polyarticular gout? I've told you before that gout is monoarticular when it's acute. Can it be possible to have acute polyarticular? Also, is aspirin good or bad for gout? Let's answer the first one. Is it possible to encounter an acute polyarticular? Yes, it's rare, but yes. Such as what? You can see it in myeloproliferative neoplasms, such as polycythemia vera, essential thrombocytosis. And if you have watched my hematology playlist, after that you can see hyperuricemia and even gout with the myeloproliferative neoplasms or with lymphoproliferative such as the leukemias. Long-standing gout can lead to acute polyarticular gout, post-organ transplants, hyperuricemia and gout, and chronic kidney disease because your kidney cannot excrete uric acid. Uric acid will accumulate to toxic levels leading to acute polyarticular gout. This rheumatology playlist has more than 50 videos. De novo purine synthesis is here. Purine degradation is here. Salvage system is here, here, and here. Let's talk about degradation. You have inosine will become hypoxanthine. Hypoxanthine can become xanthine thanks to xanthine oxidase, a famous enzyme. Xanthine can become uric acid by the same enzyme xanthine oxidase. Uric acid will end up in the urine. Let's say we would like to inhibit xanthine oxidase to inhibit the formation of uric acid so that we can manage gout. You can use allopurinol or febuxostat. They will inhibit xanthine oxidase. And as you see here, XO is xanthine oxidase, and stat means to stop because they inhibit the xanthine oxidase. These two drugs will prevent the formation of uric acid. Now, once you have uric acid, we have other options. We can increase the secretion of uric acid in the kidney so that we can get rid of the uric acid very quickly. And there is a drug called probanosid, or you can use high-dose aspirin. Low-dose aspirin will inhibit the excretion of uric acid in the kidney leading to increased serum uric acid level. But there is a problem with probanosid. What's that? When you excrete lots of uric acid in the kidney, there is an increased risk of uric acid kidney stones. That's why patients who take probanosid usually have to drink more than four liters of water per day. And that's why patients hate it and not many patients are on probanosid. Gout is a crystalline arthropathy, which is inflammatory arthritis caused by deposition of microscopic crystals into joints and other tissue. Could be acute or chronic. Could be gout if the crystals are monosodium urate. But if the crystals are calcium pyrophosphate dihydrate crystals, we call this pseudogout. If the crystals are hydroxyapatite crystals, we call this hydroxyapatite arthropathy, also known as pseudo pseudo gout. Gout is an inflammatory arthritis, affects the first metatarsophalangeal joint. It could be acute, it could be chronic. It's asymmetrical, usually monoarticular, peripheral, and it's not an autoimmune disease. Gout is a crystalline inflammatory asymmetrical monoarthritis that involves small peripheral joints, especially big toe, due to the position of microscopic crystals, monosodium urate crystals, and it's more common in males than females. Hyperuricemia is not the same thing as gout, and we have talked about this slide in a previous video. Gout is more common in middle-aged men, associated with meat, seafood, and beer. Uncontrolled hypertension and diabetes are risk factors. It's an inflammatory freaking arthritis. What's the next step? Always aspire the joint. Why? Number one, to rule out septic arthritis, which is infection. And number two is to diagnose the freaking gout. Why should I like rule out septic arthritis? Because it's a freaking emergency. And one of the management modalities for gout is to give intraarticular steroids or systemic steroids. Steroids will suppress your immune system. If this is an infection and you misdiagnosed it as gout and you gave patients steroids, good job, doctor. This is stupidity on steroids. Wink, wink. Risk factors of gout were discussed before. Please don't forget hypertension. And meat, fat, seafood, soft drinks, fructose, glucose, etc. Uric acid is less common in women because estrogen is protective. It's urico-suric. It excretes uric acid in the kidney. 
Gout could be primary or secondary. What's the problem of primary? It's an inborn error of metabolism, such as Leishnihan syndrome, deficiency of HGPRTase enzyme. We have talked about this in my previous video called purine metabolism. Or it could be secondary, which is more common than primary. Secondary could be due to overproduction of uric acid or under excretion of uric acid. Under excretion is more common than overproduction. Overproduction says increased cell turnover, eating lots of meat and beer, all of this. Under excretion, nephropathy, lead poisoning, and drugs such as diuretics, loop and thiazide, low dose aspirin, high dose niacin, pyrazanamide, and chemotherapeutic agents. Since tumor lysis syndrome can lead to hyperuricemia and gout, the drugs that are used to manage chronic gout are the same freaking drugs that will manage tumor lysis syndrome. Acute gout is the pain, usually very severe pain, could be 10 out of 10. The big toe, we call this podagra. But chronic gout is the tophi, not the podagra, the tophi. Gout can lead to five different conditions. You could be asymptomatic with high uric acid. You could have acute arthritis, this is very painful. Intercritical periods, chronic tophaceous gout, or uric acid nephropathies, these are kidney stones. As you know, uric acid kidney stones happen if your urine is acidic, in an acidic environment. Also, uric acid kidney stones are radiolucent. Uric acid has a U, radiolucent has another U. What do you mean by radiolucent? You cannot see them on x-ray. So how can I diagnose it? Renal ultrasound, baby. The diagnosis of gout was discussed before. Please don't forget arthrocentesis with joint fluid analysis. And if the patient has gout, you'll find all of this on arthrocentesis. For arthrocentesis to be diagnostic, you need at least one intracellular monosodium urate. What do you mean by intracellular? Inside the freaking neutrophils. Or more than or equal three extracellular monosodium urate crystals in the joint. Gouty crystals, aka monosodium urate crystals, are negatively birefringent crystals. Birefringence was discussed in a previous video. It was a great lecture in physics. Gouty crystals, negative birefringent pseudogout, positive birefringence. Gouty crystals are needle shaped, pseudogout are rhomboid shaped. Hyperuricemia is not the same as gout, just because you have hyperuricemia does not necessarily mean that you will suffer from a gouty attack. There is no correlation between serum uric acid level and acute gouty arthritis. Oftentimes, during an acute attack, serum uric acid may be normal or even low. What does high plasma uric acid mean? It means that you are at risk. It does not confirm the diagnosis. Now, let's talk about treatment of gout. We have treatment of the acute attack, which is entirely different from treatment of the chronic attack. Treatment of acute attack. This is a patient who comes 10 out of 10. Doctor, it's severe pain. It's the worst pain of my life. So, uh, the treatment is going to be pain medications, mostly. Cool. Chronic gout. This is a patient who is chronic. So, the purpose of the treatment is to prevent future acute attacks. So this is prophylaxis, and this aims at decreasing uric acid. Should I decrease uric acid during the acute attack? Oh, shut up. If you decrease uric acid during an acute attack, you might worsen the attack. You only decrease it when the patient has no pain, because no pain, no gain. Also, even in chronic gout, when you try to decrease uric acid, don't decrease it too much, too rapidly. If you did that, you can precipitate an acute gouty arthritis attack. Treatment of gout, baby. You can treat the acute gouty attacks, and this has nothing to do with the chronic atta chronic gout. Acute attacks, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, because gout is a freaking inflammation. Steroidals, because gout is a freaking inflammation. And colchicine. Chronic gout, we try to decrease production of uric acid and increase excretion of uric acid. Remember that uric acid patients are either overproducers or under excretors, so you do the opposite to treat it. I have a premium cardiac pharmacology course on my website, medicosisperfectionist.com, has 50 videos and it has a great discount till the end of April. Treatment of gout, acute and chronic acute, non-steroidals, steroidals, and colchicine. These are pain medications. They are also anti-inflammatory. Some people are trying to use interleukin-1 inhibitors such as anakinra and canakinumab to treat gout. We'll see if it works. Chronic gout, decrease production or increase... How do I decrease production? Diet and lifestyle modification. Decrease your intake of meat, beer, seafood. Try to lose weight. Try to manage your bad hypertension. Increase excretion. How do I do it? We use urate lowering therapy. I love it. Such as xanthine oxidase inhibitors, allopurinol, and fibroxostat. 
xanthine oxidase inhibitor, the uricosuric agent, which will excrete uric acid in the urine, and uricase, that's an enzyme, uricase. It's an enzyme that will destroy uric acid and degrade it, and you have two options, resburicase and pigloticase. Who named these things? Treatment of acute gout. Let's focus on acute. Ice packs, because it's pain and inflammation. Non-steroidal, such as indomethacin or silococcid. This is a non-selective COX inhibitor. This is a selective COX-2 inhibitor. I have talked about the difference between COX-1 and COX-2 in a great video in my bleeding and coagulation playlist. Endomethacin, if you have multiple joints, and silococcid also if you have multiple joints, and history of peptic ulcer disease because this is soft and smooth on your stomach because it's only COX-2 not COX-1. Steroidals. First, you rule out the freaking infection. That's why we do the arthroflipin synthesis. Prednisone or methylprednisone are your options. Should I give them intraarticular or systemic? You can do either. Colchicine, if the patient has multiple joints, please use low-dose colchicine. If your professor is an old dinosaur who has not opened a textbook since man walked on moon, he is used to giving high-dose colchicine, even intravenous colchicine. No more. Colchicine can be really toxic. Speaking of toxic, here are the adverse effects of colchicine, nausea, vomiting, and myopathy, bone marrow suppression, especially in chronic kidney disease. And usually patients with gout have chronic kidney disease. That's why they have gout. Are you saying that's all patients? No, 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 not all gout patients, but some of them. Okay, contraindications. Do not use colchicine with drugs that inhibit cyclochrome P453A4 especially in chronic kidney disease, because this will increase the toxicity of colchicine, and you can end up with neutropenia and infections. Treatment of chronic gout, you either decrease production or you increase excretion. Treatment of chronic gout, general rules. Decrease production. Will this work? Ah, uh, sometimes, but most of the time, at best, it will decrease uric acid by one milligram per deciliter only. This is not good. Also, if my doctor rolled up on me and said, hey, medicosis, you should not eat seafood, I will use my L3 and L4 segment to initiate a knee-jerk reaction to kick him in the pudendal nerve. It ain't gonna happen, baby. And that's why adherence with this regimen is easier said than done. Increase excretion. Do not start these drugs until the acute attack subsides. Otherwise, you might make it worse. Regarding decreased production, patients should decrease intake of processed simple sugars such as raw sugar, brown sugar, corn syrup, fructose, glucose, and sucrose. Patients should, instead of this, consume complex, not simple, but complex carbohydrates such as fruits, vegetables, and nuts, which are close to the pudendal nerve, if you know what I'm saying. Here are some tips for chronic management of gout. You should not start it during an acute attack. You should wait until the patient has no pain. The goal is to decrease the serum uric acid level below 6. If the patient has severe gout, how do I know it's severe? There are tophi. There are severe symptoms. Decrease it, the uric acid, less than 5 milligrams per deciliter in the serum. So, you rate lowering drugs. What's the goal? To decrease serum uric acid less than 6. And this is below the saturation point for uric acid. This is sophisticated stuff. Indications. When should I use urate lowering therapy? If the patient has tophi, urate stones, or urine urate more than 1,100 milligrams per deciliter, or if the patient has recurrent attacks, which is defined as more than one attack per year. What are the options? Xanthine oxidase inhibitors, uricosuric agents, and uricase. Xanthine oxidase inhibitors are the most commonly used. Not these, but these. And we can use them in overproducers or under excretors. Allopurinol, baby. Very cheap, very effective. Xanthine oxidase inhibitor is the mechanism of action. The clinical uses are chronic gout, hyperuricemia, tumor lysis syndrome, myeloproliferative neoplasms, because they can have gout and hyperuricemia, side effects, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, ah, happens with many drugs, rash, hypersensitivity reactions, this is a big deal, such as Steven Johnson syndrome, toxic epidermal necrolysis, and dress syndrome, drug-related eosinophilia with systemic symptoms, in Steven Johnson syndrome and toxic epidermal necrolysis, the patient can have fever, blisters, vesicles, and bullae, rash, diffuse erythema, which is ill-defined, contrast that with erysipelas, which is very well demarcated. The rash can also lead to extensive necrosis, as well as acute kidney injury, which was previously known as acute kidney failure. 
But since we live in the era of snowflakes and people don't like failure and everyone is a winner, we change the name into injury instead of failure. In order not to hurt your feelings. I think I'm a stupid idiot. With allopurinol, the dose has to be adjusted for GFR. Okay, drug-drug interactions. Normally, by the way, azathioprine and 6 mercaptopurine, one is a pro-drug to the other, are metabolized using the antine oxidase. Now imagine that you gave allopurinol, which is a xanthine oxidase inhibitor. No one is gonna degrade azathioprine or 6 mercaptopurine. So if you give allopurinol plus azathioprine or allopurinol plus 6 mercaptopurine, and now there is no xanthine oxidase, this will increase the toxicity of azathioprine and 6 mercaptopurine. These are chemotherapeutic agents. Side effects include myelosuppression. What is the solution? Decrease the dose of azathioprine or 6 mercaptopurine if you decide to give them with allopurinol by about 70%. Fiboxostat, I have good news and bad news. Good news, there is no need to adjust the dose based on the GFR. Cool, bad news, it's more expensive than allopurinol. Xanthine oxidase inhibitor is the mechanism of action. Medical uses include chronic gout, hyperuricemia, tumor lysis syndrome, and myeloproliferative neoplasms, nausea, vomiting, degradation, and a hypersensitive reaction. By the way, if a patient has a history of an allopurinol induced hypersensitive reaction, you should not give febuxostat because usually they will get the same reaction with febuxostat. Again, the same drug-drug interaction applies because febuxostat, you know, it inhibits the xanthine oxidase. Urate-lowering drugs, xanthine oxidase inhibitors, uricosuric agents, and uricase. Let me tell you about uricase. What's uricase? Ace is an enzyme. It's an enzyme that degrades uric acid. Some birds have it, some other organisms have it, but humans do not have it. And that's why we can give humans uricase, such as resburicase and pigoloticase. They will damage and degrade the uric acid into some trash. These are degradation products, soluble and antoin. And if you remember in embryology, this can make sense. This is close to the kidney. We use resburicase for tumor lysis syndrome, Few doctors use it for gout. Pigoloticase is definitely used for gout. And of course, tumor lysis. Why do we call it pigoloticase? Because it's a pigolated recombinant mammalian uricase. I love it. Side effect, hemolysis in patients with G6PD deficiency. Therefore, before you prescribe pigoloticase, please check the G6PD level first. And of course, you know, we always check the level of this enzyme during chronic period, not during the acute hemolytic attack. It will be false elevated and you'll say oh if the patient is fine there is no g6pd deficiency oh shut up also watch my video on g6pd deficiency because it was epic i'm an egyptian guy so i know what i'm talking about Uricosuric agents perbanosid how does it work it inhibits urat1 which is urate transporter one this will lead to increased kidney clearance of uric acid and a side effect uric acid kidney stones because you're increasing the secretion of uric acid in the urine so patients usually have to drink more than one gallon of water per day. Contraindications do not give probanosid if the patient has a history of kidney stones, low GFR, high creatinine, TOFI, or if they are overproducers, because this is not the problem. These are not under excretors, these are overproducers. Now is aspirin good or bad? Before I tell you that, Remember that a rapid increase or decrease in serum uric acid levels can precipitate the acute attacks. Take it nice and easy, doctor. So is aspirin good or bad? It depends. Low-dose aspirin is antiplatelets. It's actually bad for gout. High dose is the anti-inflammatory. And since gout is a freaking inflammatory arthritis, high-dose aspirin can be good because it's a uricosuric at high dose. It inhibits uric acid secretion at a low dose. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Get my cardiac pharmacology course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.